Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch is giving interviews on his new book. What is he saying that applies to constitutional personhood for the preborn under the 14th Amendment? We'll get into it. And how far do leftists in power plan to go in New York and Massachusetts this November and beyond? And what can you do if you live there? We're going to get into all of it today on The Simple Truth. I'm Jim Havens, and it's Friday with Father. That's Father Stephen Imbarato, our co-host every Friday, providing cutting-edge pro-life commentary you're not going to hear anywhere else. We consecrate everything to the sacred heart of Jesus through the immaculate heart of Mary and the pure, strong, chaste heart of St. Joseph. Always great to be with you. Father, how are you today? And will you lead us in an opening prayer? Sure, good to be with you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Father in heaven, name your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask send the Holy Spirit down upon us, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity to come together in your name, Lord. May your truth be on our tongue and on our lips that we may proclaim your truth. Open up the hearts and minds of those who hear us and see us that your truth may be heard. Your truth being proclaimed and heard, Lord, may we go out into the world and live your truth that today, during this hour, and as we go forward, each and every single day, we can in some small way bring souls to salvation and bring an end to the scourge of abortion in our cities, our state, our country, and our culture. And we ask this through the intercession of St. Benedict of the Cross, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, of the angels, martyrs, and saints, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, Father. So uh, Supreme Court Justice Neil Gorsuch has a new book out. He's making the rounds. Uh, doing interviews on the book. And so I've been watching a few of those interviews, trying to gain some insight on his mind with respect to personhood, constitutional personhood for our littlest brothers and sisters who are being mass murdered every day in our nation under the 14th Amendment that says that um, no state shall deprive any person of life um, without due process of the law nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction, the equal protection of the laws. And so um, what does Gorsuch think about this? We know what happened with Dobbs. They they punted on the question of personhood, didn't touch it. Um, but let's see if we can gain some insight into what he's saying as he's making the rounds. This is uh, Neil Gorsuch on Fox News Sunday with Shannon Bream uh, talking about the Constitution. Here it is. But the book does talk about, you know, balance of power. There are different branches. They have different assignments. So how does an independent judiciary operate within some conflicts between the branches? The answer is the Constitution. And if it's in the Constitution and the other two branches are infringing on it, your right to exercise your religion, your right to bear arms, your right to speak freely, I'm duty bound. I took an oath to uphold the Constitution and you win even though the government may not like it. When do I stay out? When the Constitution doesn't say anything about the subject. That's left for we the people to decide in their democratic processes. And that's most things in our daily lives, isn't it? All right, so one thing I noticed there is he didn't, as he's going through a list of rights in the Constitution, he didn't explicitly say the right to life. Now, maybe he just uh, didn't think of that one. He was saying some other ones, fine. Um, but, um, but it, it seems to, um, to get to here that he's kind of saying the right thing, um, in respect to saying that I go by the constitution and if it's in there, then okay. And if it's not in there, then I'm not touching it. And, um, look, it's in there in the 14th amendment right there. Every person has a right to life. We can't deny any person's equal protection of the laws. Every human being is a human person. I don't think he would disagree with that. And um, and therefore, this applies to every child in the womb. Abortion is unconstitutional. And this just gets to the question that we continue to ask. And that is, um, at what point do we gain our inalienable rights? And is um, when does when what is the child in the womb? Of course, they're a person. What else would they be? And he's not being asked that question directly. It'd be very interesting what his response would be. Um, But Father, any thoughts as you hear him talk about the Constitution there? I would love all of the Supreme Court justices to go out on the road and do speaking engagements and and interviews because sooner or later somebody get around to answering the question. But we have gone over and look at my opinion. Uh, My opinion has always been the same. 
uh, that these guys know, Gorsuch knows, there's no, I think, better students of history than Supreme Court justices. Uh, they, they know history. They know what the 14th Amendment is all about. They know that a civil war was fought over slavery. They know that, indeed, if they uh, did abolish abortion uh, by Dobbs that very possibly would have brought on a civil war, most likely would have brought on a civil war when you see what's uh, going on with the pro-aborts now, uh, complaining and uh, basically going crazy in the country saying that their rights are being taken away from them. So, you know, on one hand, I don't blame them, and I have said it, the only reason why they are not uh, taking a personhood case is because there is no clamor, there's no outcry, there's no demand within the country, not from the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, not from the conservative movement, not from the bishops, and not from the Republican Party. Nobody other than you, me, and a few other people are screaming and yelling. We're, actually, to be quite honest with you, Jim, only you and I are screaming and yelling, demanding an answer to that very simple question. There's nobody else. There's other people following us. There are other people who agree with us, but we're it. We're two voices crying out in the wilderness, all right? So on one hand, I understand why should they risk a civil war over this judgment when uh, over that, this, 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 um, uh, uh, personhood uh, when there's no demand as it was as it was in the in the slavery era the abolitionist era when when that was everything everyone was talking about right and uh, now on the other hand I don't know how these guys sleep at night right because I've also said this the blood of every baby is on their hands now that being said that being said nobody's screaming that. In the, in the face of the Supreme Court either, right? Nobody, I, I will I will tell you that if I saw uh, Justice Gorsuch or I saw uh, Amy Barrett or Alito or Clarence Thomas, there's two things that I would say. I would say, look, it, answer the simple question, as you pointed out, when does our inalienable right to life begin? When do we obtain the rights to, uh, of, of the inalienable right to life? It can't be taken without due process and equal protection under the law. When does that begin? Begin. And do you realize, Justice, right, Thomas or Alito or Barrett or Gorsuch or Kavanaugh, do you realize that while you continue to deny the constitutional rights of the pre-born, the blood of every baby is on your hands? And I point my finger in it, on your hands. The, their blood is on your hands. Now, it's on all of our hands. But they need to be reminded that they are derelict in their duty, that they are violating what Gorsuch should just said in that interview, right? They are, regardless of what the government, and we are, and the government is who? We the people, regardless of what we the people think, right? The Constitution is the law of the land, and they should stand on the Constitution and abolish abortion by recognizing constitutional person from the moment of conception, let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's a, a question we all have to ask ourselves. Where is the line? Where is the line for all of us when it comes to speaking up on behalf of those who have no voice, our littlest brothers and sisters in the womb being murdered every day by the thousands in the U.S., hundreds of thousands worldwide? We were all that size once. What? Why do we think that we are so great or so privileged that we would not speak up on their behalf? We made it out. By God's grace, not by anything that we did. We have our lives. What are we going to do with them? Can we not stand up for those that need us to stand up for them most? I mean, this is the gospel. This is what Jesus said about the least of these, identifying himself with the least of these. And so what is the line for us? They are mass murdering these babies by the thousands every day. Why Why have we not crossed the line? Why has that not crossed the line for each and every one of us, why are we not all demanding a simple answer to that question from the Supreme Court? That's reasonable, right? I'm sure that we agree. Um, we would, I'd say even the liberal justices, if we sat down and talked with them, we'd find things that we agree with them on. I know in the interviews that Gorsuch is doing, he's trying to stress the civility and all of that. I think that's all true. Um, at the same time, though, it's a reasonable question that must be directly asked and directly answered. What are they? 
Of course, they're persons. What else would they be? They're protected under the 14th Amendment. You at least have to answer the question, even if you disagree. Their refusal to do so is damning in and of itself. But our refusal not to be demanding the answer to the question is damning on us. So when are we going to wake up? So that's why we push with the National Men's March to Abolish Abortion, Rally for Personhood, the mensmarch.com, rallyforpersonhood.com. It'd be really easy uh, to just give up on all of it and say, hey, doesn't seem like anybody cares. Doesn't seem like this is really growing. Where is everybody? You get out there to lead and you turn around and nobody's behind you or very few. But guess what? Those few that are with you, man, they're awesome, number one. So for those that are with us in this Thanks be to God. You are incredible and inspiring and you keep us going. Um, But we need to wake people up on this. And just where is the line? It does get discouraging because you think if we haven't already crossed the line, what is the line for them? What is the line? What has to happen for them to actually stand up on behalf of the least of these and say no more? And so that's why this phrase lead on life, it encompasses all that for me which is to say whatever your position of influence is, whether it's a bishop or a priest or a, a lay person, a, a, a parent, a, a, a Supreme Court justice, whatever it is, whatever that sphere of influence is, lead on life on behalf of the least of these, those children in the womb being mass murdered every day, that is what is preeminent by far. Are we acting like it? Of course we're not. We need to take responsibility, repent, and make a new resolve. We'll, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to The Simple Truth. Jim Havens here with Father Stephen Imperato. Talked in the last segment about Supreme Court Justice Gorsuch. Um, talking about the Constitution in an interview. Here he is talking about the Declaration of Independence in another interview just a couple days ago with Megyn Kelly. Here it is. The Declaration of Independence, I think, is one of the most remarkable documents in all of human history, right? There are three basic promises or thoughts in it that were radical at the time and nearly got all all the people who signed it killed. One, we're all created equal. Two, we have inalienable rights that don't come from government but are given to us by our creator. And third, that the government derives its just powers from the consent of the people. All right. So there he is speaking eloquently about the Declaration of Independence. Those first two points obviously go against um, anything that would be be against the the child in the womb. These things are clear cut, equal rights under the law, equal justice under the law. And uh, and um, the other one, what did what did he say there? We uh, we we get our rights from our creator. Right. Not from the government. So. Um, just understanding those two points alone, we ought to be ending abortion and saying abortion goes against the Declaration as well as the Constitution. Then that third point, even saying that uh, the, the consent to be governed comes from the people. And again, who are the people? Is this re- representing all the people? It ought to be. And so that means even the children in the womb, I don't think they want to be murdered, right? I know if I'm in the womb growing, I'm not looking to be murdered, okay? This is common sense. It cuts across all three of those points he makes about the Declaration. Father, your thoughts? Yeah, so created, right? All people are created, created, right? We are created at the moment of conception. It's an alienable right endowed by our creator. It doesn't come from the government at all, right? So let me give, and then or to consent to the people, meaning the government is supposed to do what we want, what we demand, and we're not demanding. See, this is the, this becomes the issue, right? We're mass murdering our little brothers and sisters in the womb, and we are not demanding the government stop it. All right. We've never demanded the government stop this. Here's a perfect example. All right. So just scrolling through X. All right. Uh, during the commercial break and every mainstream corporate pro-life group is on there and they're talking about Down syndrome and they're talking about every subject under the sun. But finally, we get to Lila Rose, live action. And she says this. Every human being, including the child in the womb, has a fundamental right to life. All right. Again, why not an inalienable right to life? Our elected leaders, our elected leaders, she's saying, 
at every level of government have a responsibility to protect and uphold this right, okay? Well, our inalienable right to life that she doesn't use, all right, does not come from our elected leaders. And this is what I answered. I said, what do our elected officials have to do with our inalienable right to life? It's endowed by our creator and already enshrined in the Constitution. Let's stop this nonsense. The man, the Supreme Court of the United States, recognized personhood from conception now. Right. And, you know, it, this is, uh, again, our, such a pet peeve of mine. You know, I was just thinking about this after my comment in the first segment. Right. People come on our show. They listen to our show, either on YouTube, after the fact or live. And they know what they're going to hear every week. They're going to hear this exact same subject. You and I, the man in the Supreme Court, recognized person from the moment of conception, all right, them asking people, begging people, all right, to scream at the top of their lungs, the man in the Supreme Court answer that simple question, right? If you go onto any social media platform, any mainstream corporate pro-life group, you don't know what they're going to get. You don't know what you're going to get. It could be any particular subject in regards to the pro-life genre. Uh, it could be on the periphery. It could be in the center ever. Um, and this is the reason why the Supreme Court just it's not on their radar. It's not on their radar. You know, I so I just read a article the other day that I wasn't aware of that that there is an organization in uh, the liberal uh, movement. All right, the Democrat, the liberal movement called Uncommitted, where uh, the there's tens of thousands of people who refuse to commit to the Democratic Party, Democrat Party, all right, unless they acknowledge the genocide that Israel is supposedly perpetrating on the Palestinians, right? Now, I don't buy into that narrative at all. But I was thinking, wow, why isn't there that type of movement within the pro-life movement, right, where the leaders of the pro-life movement start saying, look, it, we are going to remain uncommitted unless the Republican Party becomes the party of abolition again. All right, we're going to become uncommitted, all right, for this particular issue, on this particular issue, on this particular issue, until the inalienable rights of the pre-born are recognized from conception, right? Uh, that would be brilliant. That would be, that's something that would unite the entire pro-life movement and give us the influence that we are looking for. But we are so enamored with political influence, being part of the Republican machine, right? The political machine, political idolatry, as you and I call it, right? And that's the only place you're going to hear that terminology here is on the simple truth, this show, right? It's the same old stuff. And again, I'm, tr I'm I want to segue into what we're going to get into. So what do we all do, right? Uh, because, you know, we all have the blame, but at least Jim, you and I understand what's at stake. All right. We know what the solution is. We see the solution, the remedy, all right, for this, this daily mass murder, all right, and its abolition uh, through constitutional person from the moment of conception. Yeah, well, uh, Neil Gorsuch uh, had more to say. He was asked directly about um, Roe, about abortion uh, from Major Garrett of CBS. Uh, so we've got that clip here. This is where it gets interesting. And uh, based on everything that you have already heard Gorsuch say, um, this cuts against a lot of that, but, um, but here he is kind of laying his, um, his insight down and, and really letting us know how he thinks about this. And I think this is quite telling. Here it is. And then when it comes to Roe versus Wade, for example, what did the court decide? Decided that we, the people, should answer that question, not nine people sitting in Washington, D.C. How about affirmative action? Much the same thing. What did we decide? We decided that all people are created equal, that it's not acceptable in this country to uh, discriminate on the basis of race. And for those who would say, but I feel something's been ripped away from me, you would say? I would say that we're taking it back to you. That in a democracy, you're in the driver's seat. You're the sovereign. Those famous three first words of the Constitution empower you. Do you really want me deciding everything for you? And for a woman in a state where she no longer has the rights she once relied on, is that cold comfort? Major, 
All I can say is I don't know better than you do on these questions. I have, there's no legal training or expertise that gives me any special insight into these questions. And that most major Western democracies have decided these questions through the ballot box. And they've managed to reach a consensus on these questions. And I have great faith in the American people to do the same. All right. So that's very interesting. So he I think it's fair to say that he's denying the personhood of the preborn until he explicitly affirms it. He he talks about equal equal justice there and uh, and and equal rights for people. But uh, in the other breath, he's saying, well, it's up to the people when it comes to abortion. And I have faith in the people, um, but it's up to the people. And again, what about the people? in the womb, um, but he seems to be just dismissing that as even a factor. Um, That doesn't even seem to be in his mind at all. Um, And and to just say, well, whatever people vote for, that's what we want to do. And also just kind of dismissing his own responsibility as a Supreme Court justice. Again, upholding the Constitution and what is written there in the 14th Amendment. Just tell us what it means when it comes to personhood. Um, Totally dismissing that and saying, um, well, who am I? I? I mean, who am I to say anything? I don't know. I, I'm no expert in this. It's a scientific fact. It's a scientific consensus that life begins at fertilization, conception, fertilization. Look, I mean, every human being is a human person. W- what are we talking about here? Of course, you know, of course, you know. And and then you're you're saying that it's just up to the people kind of giving us the Trump line here. And if that's where we're, we are, uh, going along the lines of what you were saying in your in your last comment, Father, if that's where we are, and it, the consent of the governed, what if the consent of the governed is, we want child murder, we're good with it, we want to vote for it, we want to have it, and the Supreme Court isn't going to stand up against it, and, and, and they're going to let it go, just like slavery was let go for so long before the Supreme Court um, well, they, they didn't put an end to it, actually. It was put an end to finally a president had some courage and some leadership and uh, and and passed the Emancipation Proclamation that helped to uh, push it through the legislature. And then they, um, they they got it through all the way. But that this is a different circumstance where it's already in the Constitution because of all that in the 14th Amendment. We just need the Supreme Court to do their job um, but father, is it, um, are we, have we law? I mean, the, the Democrats all the time want to talk about democracy, the democratic process. It seems like if we've gone so far where the democratic process leads to us murdering each other, um, then, um, it seems to me that the democracy, um, has failed. But this is the perfect example. That interview is the perfect example of, of what I'm talking about, all right? So why isn't the question being asked, right? And if they ask him a direct question, he will answer the question. But they're not asking him the direct question, so he's not going to answer it. Because then, what do they call it? It's a terminology for it? He'll prejudice, prejudice himself or whatever, right? Uh, look at the, the, the and and the reason why the question's not being asked is because the mainstream corporate pro life movement, who holds the banner that we want to end abortion, all right, has not educated anyone, anyone. All right. About this, this singular remedy. Right. So so we, the people are not demanding. Says We sent it back to you, the people. In other words, we put it in your hands. Now you tell us what you want. Yeah, I want you to answer this simple question. Right. Supreme Court of the United States. But nobody's demanding it. Nobody's asking for it. Right. That's the way I read this whole thing. Right. So, yes, it was a B.S. answer skirting the issue. But what do we want? We want him to lob a softball to us. In my mind, Dobbs was the softball, right? He sent it. They sent it supposedly back to the states, an issue that's not a state's issue. It's a constitutional issue. Again, 1858, post-Dred Scott, pre-Civil War America. We already have the 14th Amendment, right? And we didn't take the bait. We didn't take it. We're not doing what we're supposed to do, right? And I'm telling you, if they ask somebody, ask them the direct question, all right, that we always ask, right? Justice Gorsuch, 
When do we, all of us persons in the United States, obtain our inalienable right that guarantees us equal protection? When? When? He's not going to say. He's not going to say, I don't know. He's not going to say that because we're all created equal, right? So it's 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 almost like a hamster wheel, right? It's 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 just it's it's sad. Yeah, it's terrible, and uh, yeah, he says that he he leaves that with he's got faith in the people. Um, I'm not so sure, but it, let's go. We got to get going. We're going to be right back with more. Stay tuned. Truth, Jim Havens here with Father Stephen Emirato. One more clip here of Supreme Court Justice Gorsuch. Uh, this is again with Major Garrett CBS uh, talking about Lady Justice being blindfolded. Here it is. Last time I checked, Lady Justice out front is wearing a blindfold, and the scales of justice are even, and that every person who comes to court is entitled to have a judge fairly and neutrally try to apply the law to his or her case. And no party is entitled to have Lady Justice peak and favor one side or tilt the scales of justice systematically in favor of any party. All right, look, we need uh, we need that case to get before the Supreme Court. We need uh, some great lawyers to come forward and uh, and figure out how to get some standing with uh, for the children in the womb, for the preborn brothers and sisters of ours that are uh, being killed every day, that their lives are being uh, threatened right now. Um, they need standing. They need someone to be able to stand up for them in that court. And we need Lady Justice with her blindfold on making the ruling. These are persons uh, with with a right to life, and uh, we need that to take place. So again, we, we continue to try to keep talking about it, keep trying to push, keep trying to advance, keep trying to call on everybody uh, to, to go all out in this direction uh, towards this goal to end this uh, this ongoing daily mass murder of our littlest brothers and sisters. And just one last thing, Father, before we get your comments, uh, this gives you a reminder of how the left handles it. Uh, they have no problem demanding things from the Supreme Court, and they don't. They're not like us in the way we demand. Where I think it's right to be civil and reasonable, although loud, and uh, and and to have uh, have big numbers. That'd be wonderful if we had some big numbers. Um, but they uh, they do it in quite a, a threatening, uh, really quite evil sort of way. Here's uh, here's Chuck Schumer back. Uh, what he had to say, I believe this. Ha- I believe he made these comments after the the Dobbs leak, um, before the Dobbs ruling came out officially. Here it is. Republican legislatures are waging a war on women, all women, and they're taking away fundamental rights. I want to tell you, Gorsuch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. You won't know what hit you if you go forward with these awful decisions. All right, Father and Brody, your thoughts. Well, and then we're wondering why Gorsuch doesn't come out. I mean, look at, I mean, Biden just two weeks ago, right after he stepped down, right? His singular focus was before I uh, give up the office of presidency, I want a code of ethics, I want the reform of the Supreme Court. These guys know they have targets on their back, right? Why? Look it, because the other side knows darn well and the Supreme, these conservative justices, Roberts more than anyone knows darn well, all right, that, that they, well, they don't know what would happen to them, but they're pretty darn sure what would happen to them would not be good if they abolished abortion through personhood. There probably would have been lynchings, all right, and the lynchings would have been specific to the Supreme Court justices. Look, at, you know, I, I, again, the more I think about it, the more I understand him couching his words, and I wouldn't doubt if they, if he had a, if he sat down with his conservative brothers and sisters on the Supreme Court and said, look, and I'm going to go out and do the the, uh, uh, the interview circuit. Hey, you don't touch the 14th Amendment, man. You don't touch personhood, right? And even if they ask you a direct question, but they probably won't ask you a direct question because everybody's clueless in this area, right? And so to me, it makes perfect sense. So, so again, 
who's to blame here? All right. I mean, everyone's to blame. All right. Everyone's to blame. All right. We're all, all right, uh, guilty in some way, shape, or form of the structure of sin, this culture of death. JP2 said that, right? But more than anyone else, all right, if you think about the fact that the party of death, the Democrats, all right, don't want their fundamental right to kill their babies and make tons of money off of killing their babies away because it's a multi-billion dollar industry. The mainstream corporate pro-life movement right, doesn't want to lose what they have, the mammon they have by doing what they should be doing, right? And this, I'm telling you, it gets me, it gets me more and more angry. Last segment, I'm frustrated. Now I'm just downright angry angry, right? Because Lila Rose and Abby Johnson and Kristen Hawkins and Margie Danifelsa, all these people know better. They know what you know. They know what I know. They have never said, Jim and Father, you are wrong. They know and they are not right. Lila puts up the smoke screen, right, that our elected officials are responsible for this. She knows better. She's got Josh Craddock working for her. So everybody, Gorsuch is full of it. Lila's full of it. The mainstream corporate pro-life movement is full of it, right? The only ones who are telling the truth here, all right, are the pro-aborts, the Democrats, right? They're telling us what they're going to do, and they'll do it. And instead of us getting our dander up and pushing back and saying, oh, yeah, all right, we're going to take this away from you right now, all right? We don't care what the cost is. We're not going to measure the cost. We're going to do this. No, we we cower. We 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 are. We cower because we're cowards. It's it's a it's a disgusting. It's 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 a disgrace. Yeah. The, and God the have mercy step, on us. Yeah. The next step, the next domino that has to fall here is are those leaders, the, those those pro life leaders in, in the mainstream pro life movement. Um, that is the next piece, right? Because if the if pro life leaders if they themselves can't even get this and push towards the end on this as they ought to, why would we expect anybody else to be getting it? I, you know, I think anybody can grasp this, but th- I think if anybody starts to grasp it and then they think, well, wait a minute, this isn't even what any pro-life leaders are saying. I guess maybe I'm a little bit too far down the road here. Maybe I'm too extreme, right? Not even the pro-life leaders are, are pushing on this, right? And really, yes, what, what is most frustrating, I, I agree, is, is live action and Lila Rose. And the reason why is because I think that she and live action are the ones that are closest to us in their position. And, 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 and that really then means that they are the next domino that has to fall because they get this, just like you're saying. They've got Josh Craddock, who knows this better than you and I, right? They've got him working for them. They know this. They're just not pushing it. They're not, they're not going for it as they ought to do. And if they're not even going to do that when they know it, then why would the other pro-life leaders do it who don't really know it, who don't have Josh Craddock working for them? So it's really up to them. It's up to live action and Lila Rose to start pushing this full force. If she did that with her platform, she would make a huge ripple effect right there. And and part of part of that wave, some of the, some of that, uh, that that good consequence of that is going to be some of those pro-life leaders getting convinced and convicted and coming along and then we start moving now i thought our role in this um seemed to be that with the with the men's march uh, initiative that uh you know slowly maybe but by god's grace th- this thing's going to snowball we're going to get bigger numbers by god's grace and then that's what matters to these pro life leaders they don't care about you and i Unless we can show them we've got big numbers on our side or big money or big clicks or something. It's not about necessarily listening for the truth. It's about how, you know, how how can this person help me? Sadly, that's how it really does seem to me. They don't care what you're saying unless, you know, there's some way that um, basically you can scratch their back or, or in some sense, you know, and that's a sad reality. And maybe that's part of our fallen human nature that you would expect, uh, the, you know, that, that would be a little bit more overcome, uh, by the good folks that are leading in, in the pro-life area. Um, but I think, yeah, there, there's a lot there that, that is, that is troubling. Um, but, um, you know, I don't know why, 
why we haven't been able to get a bigger groundswell going. Um, but again, very grateful for those um, who have seen this, who have stepped up and have come along. I believe that every single bit of effort that's been put in has been worthwhile and fruitful. Again, we're going to be in Boston, Massachusetts, November 16th. I, I pray and hope that's going to be our biggest event yet. I hope Boston comes out in a big way for that and people come in from all over. Um, but we, all we can do is everything we can do and leave it to God's grace and, and see what happens. But um, Father, your thoughts on it. Yeah, well, why isn't all these interviewers, right, that interviewer, all right, uh, presses Gorsuch about the women's rights, right, the rights of women? What about the women, right? Well, then why isn't, right, the rights of the baby, what about the baby, what about the baby's rights on the tip of the tongue of every single interviewer in the country because the mainstream corporate pro-life movement is demanding the abolition of abortion through constitutional person because the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, not just Lila, she is the tip of the spear. She is the influencer. She's the one who could gather everybody together. But their propaganda power, their public relations power, their marketing power, right? I mean, it would be on the tip of the tongue of every... Gorsuch would not go out and do all right, an interview tour for his book if he thought that, that was the question he was going to be asked in every single interview, but he felt comfortable enough to know that that question's not going to be asked because that question's not out there. And why isn't that question out there? Because there's two guys, a priest and a layman, all right, family man on a, on a, on a radio station with an obscure group, the Men's March to Abolish Abortion, and beyond that, nobody's talking about it, right? And Lila, what makes Lila really more complicit than anyone is I think she's purposely avoiding it. Right. And I really do believe that they're putting all their eggs in one basket. Right. To get Trump elected and then hope. Right. That he does their dirty work for them by demanding the Supreme Court recognize person from the moment of conception. That's what the presidential executive order on personhood. The goal of that was to get the Supreme Court to recognize personhood from the moment of conception. But what if Trump loses? What if he loses just like he lost after his first term? Hey, Lila, what if they lose? What if we don't get another chance? How are you going to sleep at night, Margie and Lila and Abby? How are you guys going to sleep at night? I couldn't sleep at night if I was you guys. No, this is wrong. Our babies are being murdered. They're being murdered because they're being denied their constitutional rights. And, uh, and indeed, we should be screaming at the top of our lungs over this. Yeah. And what if he wins and he's actually telling the truth? He's not lying. What if he's telling the truth that he really does believe it ought to be left to the states and he's not going to do anything? What if that takes place? Right. It's a bad strategy to just wait and see what's going to happen here. I mean, look, do what you can every day. Right. And, and stand up for the least of these every day. This is a fundamental question that has to continue to be pounded day in and day out and demanded that the Supreme Court answers it. That's the right place to answer it. Not just the, the blindfold of Lady Justice, but right above uh, on the Supreme Court building, what does it say? Equal justice for all, right? They are to answer this question, equal justice for some or equal justice for all. Is the child in the womb not included or are they? If they're not a person, what are they? When do our inalienable rights begin? Answer the question. So it needs to be pounded. Josh Craddock, I don't know why he's silent there, but um, look, we got to pray for live action, for Lila, for Josh, for everybody over there. Maybe there's maybe there's somebody over there in the mix that is pounding the table for this and isn't getting much of a hearing that is as frustrated as we are. I don't know. Uh, but what I do know is prayer and work. Let's do what we can do with the sphere of influence, whatever it is that we have. And um, and let's keep going. When we get back, we're going to have uh, a little bit more um, in the direction of we wanted to get to New York and Massachusetts. I think we might get there a little bit today. Maybe we'll hit that next week as well. But uh, we're going to lead into that basically with Kamala's uh, VP pick, Tim Walls, um, and, uh, and, and, and a very interesting connection between uh, what he has done as governor in Minnesota 
and what has been going on in New York State and continues to be pushed in New York State. Not just the abortion expansion, as horrible and terrible as it was in 2019, the so-called Reproductive Health Act, but now they're pushing this Prop 1, this uh, so-called Equal Rights uh, Amendment, which is a much bigger process to get uh, abortion into the state constitution. And so that's all now on the ballot. They had to go to a lot of work to get that done. Now it's up to a vote. We'll get to it when we get back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to The Simple Truth. Jim Havens here with Father Stephen Imbarado. So uh, presidential Democratic nominee Kamala Harris uh, chose her uh, her VP nominee, uh, Tim Walls, governor of Minnesota. Uh, and uh, what a mess this guy is. But um, I want to first show you, we, we played this uh, a couple times around the election in 2022 when Dr. Scott Jensen and uh, Matt Burke, that was the ticket on the Republican side, running against uh, Governor Tim Walls. Walls won uh, by a significant margin. I um, mean, this was the Jensen Burke ad um, that they were running leading up to that election. It's the worst political ad I have ever seen. It is so offensive and disgusting for those that can't see it, that aren't watching on video here. Everything that he is saying, this Dr. Jensen, he's holding an infant in his hands and looking at the child at the end as he's saying these words and and backing down and denying this uh the the, the child just uh not long maybe a, a few months before in the womb denying that child its rights and its life and unwilling to fight for that child and saying that it's really not an issue of importance here's the ad i've delivered 500 babies in my career abortion is divisive and tim walls is weaponizing the issue in minnesota it's a protected constitutional right, and no governor can change that. And I'm not running to do that. I'm running because we need safe streets, excellent schools, parental rights, and more money in the family budget. That's what I'll fight for. Let's focus on the issues that matter. Let's focus on the issues that matter as he's looking at this infant and saying, basically, you don't matter. Right? You didn't matter a few months ago in the womb just disgusting. I just can't believe that ad was ever made. And what's the philosophy behind it? I understand this in these Democrat states and also in throughout the entire country. This is what Trump's philosophy is at this point is, well, we need to win the election. So therefore, um, let's not be against abortion. Let's not fight against abortion, except for just saying that it's extreme to have uh, late term abortions. And that's it. And, and and therefore, let's just punt on that and talk about other things. And and I think that's going to work out well. They lose when they do that. They lose. It doesn't work. And yet they keep running the same play. And now we have that Governor Walls, who's now uh, being propped up here even into a bigger role, potentially, um, as uh, as if he were to make it the VP uh, in the entire country. This is what this is all you need to know about this guy. Uh, this is him at a, a rally um, that, uh, well, he describes himself quite clearly. Here it is. And my record is so pro-choice. Nancy Pelosi asked me if I should tone it down. I stand with Planned Parenthood and we won. Uh, so I don't even know what he was saying at the end there in his hysterics, but I do know that he's saying that uh, he is radical on abortion com- compared to Nancy Pelosi. So that's about all we need to know about this guy. Patricia Heaton, I, I like this. I saw this. Uh, she posted this on X and she wrote on the top, evil maniac, but folksy in quotes. And that's exactly how they're trying to sell this guy, folksy. Um, but really, yeah, evil maniac is really what fits. Uh, Father, your thoughts on it. Yeah, well, what do they call him? Uh, Tampon Tim. You know, he's look at he's a baby killing, perversion pushing, lunatic, coward. I mean, when you think about the fact that and this is the thought that came to my mind listening to that commercial. OK, what is God going to bless? Right. That guy was running against an absolute, absolute 
terrible, the worst candidate that, and again, he's the worst candidate ever, vice president, worst candidate ever for the governorship of, of Minnesota. But God's not going to bless the other guy, right? And just like, and again, I want to go back to the point that I was making about if Trump wins, the mainstream corporate pro-life movement will scream bloody murder demanding constitutional person from the moment of conception. Okay, fine. If he wins, if he wins, right? But I'm telling you, and, and you you have your doubts as to whether they'll do that. I, 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 I predict that that's exactly what they're thinking. That's what their game plan is, right? But what is God going to bless? This is, we need to think supernaturally. There's a moral issue here, a constitutional issue. Those are the two issues, right? We are failing constitutionally. We're failing failing morally. And who are the victims? God's, our little brothers and sisters in the womb who are God's children, right? This, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We should be shaking in our boots. How much is our Lord going to take? You know, how, how much, you know, how, how long is he going to extend his mercy? And again, if we're thinking that we're going to stand before him someday and our Lord says, what did you do while they were mass murdering my babies? And we're going to start giving a litany of things. I am not going to use this program as part of my curriculum vitae. When I see Jesus face to face and he asked me, what did you do about this? I'm not even going to say, Lord, I got arrested five times. I'm going to get down on my knees prostrate myself and say, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. I am sorry. I didn't do near enough. But where is the fear of the Lord? There is no fear of the Lord, not in the Republican Party, not in the mainstream corporate pro-life movement, not in the conservative movement. Nowhere, nowhere. The USCCB, fear of the Lord. Ah, man, I don't remember the last time I saw fear of the Lord, the mainstream corporate, I mean, in the in the USCCB, surely wasn't there during COVID-19 in 2020. Oh, man, I tell you, it, this is getting downright scary. I, I truly believe that we, we are very possibly heading to a debacle in, in November. I, I The more I think about this, the more I talk about it, the more I process it, I think our Lord is setting us up for not the great chastisement, because I'm not into that, but a huge chastisement. Yeah, and, and here's a little bit more just connecting this together with uh, New York and Massachusetts. There's a good article out there, firstthings.com, um, that talks about uh, this with Tim Walls saying that uh, he supported an omnibus health bill that radically changed his state's abortion law. This health bill in a callback to the ancient practice of abandoning newborns intentionally and explicitly legalized the denial of life-saving medical care to infants born alive after botched abortions. State law used used to explicitly protect these babies, but Walls and his supporters changed it, insisting that references to abortion be removed and that medical care be changed to mere care. In addition, while the original law required medical personnel to preserve the life and health of the born alive infant, the wall supported change struck that whole line and now requires medical personnel merely to, quote, care for the infant who is born alive. No more requirements to preserve the life and health of the born alive infant after a botched abortion. New York State did something similar in passing its Reproductive Health Act. That state originally required two physicians to be present at an abortion after viability to ensure the health and safety of the mother and viable child if there were an accidental birth. But the 2019 law explicitly removed this requirement of protection for the newborn infants. Readers may also be familiar with the similar 2019 bill in Virginia, Governor Ralph Northam, uh, and what he said. And so um, in Massachusetts, they've got their own mess, the Roe Act, uh, that they passed back in 2020. Um, overriding the the veto of the then uh, uh, Democrat, uh, the then Republican governor. Uh, now they've got a Democrat governor, and uh, you know, so nothing seems to be on the ballot in Massachusetts. If we've got listeners out there that um, that have anything regarding abortion and referendum or anything, I couldn't find anything. New York does have this Prop One that's going to try to enshrine it in the Constitution by way of a constitutional amendment, uh, which is going an even bigger step forward than where they're already at. Um, so, um, what's the line for folks? Um, what's the line? What's the line in New York? What's the line in Massachusetts? What's the line for all of it? it, it we, we, the line ought to be they're murdering innocent children, period. 
What are we going to do about it? And um, we'll, we'll be back next week to talk more and uh, continue to try to um, flesh this out and, and hopefully do some good. Father, your, your thoughts to close this out. Final blessing. Look, at in the meantime, you got to get out in front of these abortion mills. you got to support your local pregnancy center. We need to save as many babies as we can while we work on abolition, all right? That's the front line. In front of the abortion mills and the pregnancy resource centers, go out and save these babies. They're God's babies. They're our brothers and sisters. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Go out and give...